Good morning. Bo, please read the problem, and Bobby, please translate. Flippin' physics. A horizontal spring is attached to a cord. The cord goes over a pulley, and a 0.025 kilogram mass is attached to the cord. If the spring is stretched by 0.045 meters, what is the spring constant of the spring? Mass equals 0.025 kilograms, x, the displacement from equilibrium position, equals 0.045 meters, and lowercase k, the spring constant, equals question mark. Billy, please solve the problem. Okay, let's start with the free body diagram of the forces acting on the system. The force of gravity on the hanging mass acts downward. The force of the spring acts to the left because the spring is displaced to the right, and the force of the spring is opposite the displacement of the spring. Uh, let's define the positive direction as to the right, over the pulley, and down. Now we can use Newton's second law. The net force in the positive direction equals the force of gravity, which is positive, minus the force of the spring. Uh, the net force also equals mass times acceleration in the positive direction. The acceleration of the mass hanging is zero, so the force of the spring equals the force of gravity. We can substitute in the magnitude of the spring force equation, which is the spring constant times the displacement from rest position. Uh, we can also substitute mass times acceleration due to gravity in for the force of gravity, solve for the spring constant, and substitute in numbers and we get uh, 0 0.025 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared uh, divided by 0 0.045 meters. Um, that works out to be 5.45 or uh, 5.4 newtons per meter using two significant digits and remembering the arcane rounding rule, which says we always round to an even number when the number to be rounded ends in a perfect five. Very nice, Billy. Uh, isn't there a force of gravity acting down on the spring? Th that should be in the free body diagram, right? Actually, the force of gravity acting down on the spring just causes the spring to curve slightly. It does not really pull the spring in the direction of the cord, uh, so we do not really need it in the free body diagram. But what I want to know is, why did we get a different spring constant than last time? Last time we used the same spring, only it was hanging vertically, and we solved for a spring constant of 4.1 newtons per meter. What gives? The reason for the discrepancy between the two calculated spring constants was actually just alluded to by Bobby. The force of gravity acting on the center of mass of the vertically hanging spring actually makes the spring longer. This particular spring is called an expansion spring. It is designed to be expanded. When it is horizontal, it has a length of 5.3 centimeters. However, when it hangs vertically, even without any mass hanging on it, the force of gravity acting on the expansion spring's center of mass, along with the corresponding force of tension holding the spring up, expands the spring to 5.4 centimeters. The reverse happens to a compression spring. A compression spring is designed to be compressed. When this compression spring is horizontal, it has a length of 6.2 centimeters. However, when this compression spring is vertical, it has a length of 6.1 centimeters. This is because the force of gravity acting downward on the center of mass of a compression spring, along with the force normal acting upward on the compression spring, compresses the spring when it is vertical. The same thing happens to humans when we stand because our spines act much like a compression spring. Oh good, we finally got to the human spine. Our vertical height when standing is smaller than our horizontal length when lying down. For example, I measured my vertical height to be 1.716 meters while standing, and my horizontal length to be 1.725 meters while lying down. That is a 9 millimeter difference in height between standing and lying down. When humans stand, the intervertebral discs, which are layers of squishy cartilage between the vertebra of our spine, act like compression springs and get squished slightly. This de decreases our height when standing. Wait, I heard humans get shorter as the day progresses. That is somewhat true. Our height decreases the longer we stand. That means you are taller when you get out of bed in the morning and shorter when you get in bed at night. 
and while you are sleeping, your spine slowly expands to make you taller. That must mean astronauts get taller in space. Absolutely, Bo. Astronauts do get taller in space. They still have a force of gravity acting on them, however, there is no corresponding force normal to compress their spine. In space, humans can grow up to 3% taller. That means a 6 foot tall astronaut can gain as much as 2 inches in height. When they return back to Earth, however, they compress back to their Earth height. Um, I, I will also point out that there could be deleterious health effects caused by spinal expansion and compression associated with space flights that I truly hope are currently being studied. <laughs> Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.